Today's sword is our English longsword. It's kind of a unique looking style of sword and it's very much a part of the 15th century. This mid uh, 1400s sword has what uh, you, you were at Oakshot sometimes calls a key pommel. So it looks like a, the back of a key that you would turn. It's very thin in this profile, but goes wide and it's kind of oval shaped. Often they have a lot of detail on them. Uh, it has a slightly downturned guard with a row of detail across that. This particular one has a brown grip and you can see it has some risers running under the leather in a cross pattern and a midpoint. These help give tactile responses to the hand when you have it, when you have it on the sword and it allows you to really get a firm grip on the piece. The sword pommel does allow the hand to ride up on top of it, so it is kind of a two-handed longsword, though it's of a shorter variety. Uh, this whole piece is only about 43 and a half inches long. The blade length is about 33 and a half. A cog is running right at five and just under a half inch, five and a quarter or so. So it's a it's a nice moving sword, feels really good in the hand. The total weight's only about two and a half pounds, so it really moves quite well. The amount of pieces that we see uh, with this style are mostly in uh, Germany, Switzerland, places like that. We call it the English Longsword because some of the detailing we have was in an English collection of a painting, actually. We took the detail of the piece from the Trinity Altar piece. Uh, it's a Flemish piece in the National Museum on Scotland on loan from the Royal Collection. And that's dated to about 1475 or so. The actual sword itself that we use the dimensions and structure from is from the Zurich Lance Museum and that is uh, corroded pretty heavily so there's not any much detail on the parts. So we wanted a piece that had some you know pizzazz to it when we were doing it so we took some detail from that painting to create the piece in its totality. Um, you see these in a lot of effigies in that part of Europe. Uh, it creates a nice piece that looks great on your hip but they are very effective for cutting. Uh, a lot of people like these that aren't uh, looking for that big massive type longsword to do cutting with. They really enjoy cutting with this piece. Uh, some people actually recommend it for people with a slightly shorter stature. They think this piece is an excellent cutter. And this works pretty well uh, for a lot of varieties of different types of use, cutting, and practice for the longsword. So if you're interested in a long sword that's maybe not as big as some of the other ones on the marketplace today and looking for something a little more unique, some people love this design. They think it's the best design ever. Uh, other people are put off by this. It's one of those types of pieces that ebbs and flows in its popularity. You know, for, in a real way, what it happens is as people get into swords, they kind of like a certain style. And as they study and spend more time around swords and experience them from more sources, they will evolve how they like the swords and the different styles. So some people that years ago would never have bought this sword now are some of its biggest fans. And that's just the way it is in a hobby where you're interested in a lot of things and there's so much to learn. So this sword would be a great addition to your uh, collection. And if you're interested in something like this, let us know. We'll have one on the way to you right away.